Hey guys, Zach here from Kubota Lynchburg. Today I wanted to talk to you about engine versus PTO horsepower and what the differences are and why there are two or maybe sometimes even three different numbers of horsepower when you're looking at purchasing a tractor. So back in the day, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, a lot of times they would rate tractors by their PTO horsepower. You'd buy an old Massey Ferguson and it would be a 35 horsepower tractor and that was 35 horsepower at the PTO, which is the power takeoff at the back of the tractor. Because that is usually for most applications and especially back then when you're pulling a bush hog or a tiller or something like that, that is the most important feature about a tractor is how much horsepower you're getting off the back of the tractor. Um, now that doesn't tell you what the engine horsepower is, kind of like when you're buying a car, buying a Corvette, um, it's 465 engine horsepower, but you know that doesn't really transmit through. So these days we now rate our tractors by their engine horsepower, and of course there is a rating for PTO horsepower. So for example, this is a LX3310, it is a 33 horsepower engine, um, but on the PTO you're going to be somewhere around the, you know, the 25 PTO horsepower range. And the reason for those number differences is the engine horsepower is basically the engine sitting on a table without a tractor, without anything attached to it, and that is direct power from that engine producing to you know a test system that tests it and tells it what that horsepower is. So that's without it in a tractor or anything like that. Now, you have the engine horsepower rating of the engine in the tractor, which is different because it has more load, more stuff attached to it. And then once all the power from the engine transmits through the tractor into the PTO, it's going to be less because everything's drawing power. For example, um, if we go on some bigger tractors that have hydraulic um, remotes on the rear um, and it's got front third function and everything like that, all of those pumps require more power and so it's going to be pulling the power away from your total output on the rear end. Um, so, you know, a big 70 horsepower tractor is going to have like a 60 PTO because 10 of that horsepower was lost from the engine to powering those different pumps and those AC units and all those other pieces along the way until it comes to the output on the back end. Now Kubota is very efficient on their engine transmission power loss there, so a lot of times you'll see that a 70 horsepower Kubota is going to actually have more PTO horsepower than like I say a 70 horsepower New Hollander, Coyote, or Mahindra just due to how efficient the engines and transmissions are. Something else you'll notice though is that on a hydrostatic tractor with that hydrostatic pump and uh, the system that it drives, you actually have a loss of more PTO horsepower. So even though you have a 33 horsepower on a gear drive, you might only have 24 instead of 25 on the back end because that hydraulic, that hydrostatic transmission takes more power. So again, your engine horsepower is going to be literally your engine sitting there and your PTO horsepower is going to be after everything is taken and calculated on the back of the tractor. So when you're buying your tractor and you're looking for implements and you see that this bush hog requires at least 25, P or 25 horsepower, remember or check and check with the vendor or anything like that, is that 25 tractor horsepower or is that 25 PTO horsepower because they're two totally different things.